few winners here are convinced that they can buy themselves out of the pathologies that they helped to create, while the many are left to clean up the mess they left behind and suffer. We don't have a gas drilling problem, we have a democracy problem. The first two horizontal wells on the Marcel Shell were drilled a few minutes from my home. Since then, I sat in people's living rooms who have glycol ethers, phenol, arsenic, formaldehyde, methane in their blood, people with sores all over their bodies, whole families getting sick, their animals dying, uranium, soybean, methane, multi organic compounds in the now dark brown boiling water. With so many cases, it was their neighbors who used to land on them. As the saying goes, I believe in people's right to swing their fists, but I believe that right hand is where the other person's nose begins. Most 
troubling to me are the so-called scientists who are perverting the scientific method and bringing disrepute to the scientific community by manipulating data, distorting facts, and using factually inaccurate statements in their attempts to demonize the natural gas extraction industry. It appears that many of these environmental extremists are opposed to shale gas development because it's driving down the price of energy costs to the consumer, making their pet projects of solar and wind even more uneconomic than they were before. Please note that currently wind accounts for only less than one half of one percent of our entire total energy needs in the United States. I urge you to stand up to the American taxpayers and the American consumers in the support environmentally safe development of shale gas. Development of the Marcellus Shale is good for Pennsylvania and it's good for America. use of fossil fuels. 
and I'm afraid that your subcommittee is just another diversion while the way is being paved for selling American gas overseas for profit. Yes. The myths of this industry can be refuted, rebutted, and need to be rebutted. You still have time to go back to the DOE for a different model. But if you continue to force concerned citizens working together for our common future back out into the streets, then that is where the political decision will ultimately be made. Yes! Good evening, committee. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Jeremy Nico. I am an environmental and safety person for a leading operator in this area. I have no prepared speech. Um, I'm going to speak to you from my heart to tell you what this means to me. I have three quick uh, topics I'd like to hit on very briefly. Uh, the first one is when I graduated from Penn State University a few years back, I had to leave the area. I'm a uh, lifelong Washington County resident, but I had to leave the area in search of opportunity in the environmental field. I was able to return to the area to my family and my friends and be a well-paying uh, professional position with one of these operators. Uh, the second topic I'd like to hit is that I am an avid outdoorsman and care truly about the environment. Um, and I find it insulting for people to to dispute that when I'm trying to do my job, which I firmly believe in doing the right thing, and that is what I'm paid to do, to make sure that our company follows all regulations and guidelines. I have a, I have a high understanding of those regulations. The third thing I'd like to address is hydraulic fracturing. I'm not going to say much about it because to me, it's a non-issue. I see it in the field every day. I'm a field person. I see no reason for this extreme concern for hydraulic fracturing. It is done efficiently, and effectively, and safely. Thank you. While I was standing and sitting here earlier waiting for my turn in line to speak to you people, I got this crazy vision about the masses of people here that maybe I was at the wrong place. Maybe I was at the American Idol tryout. Here, but think about it. What are those people looking for at the tryouts? They are looking for an opportunity to be successful and live the American dream. And that is why we need to support this natural shale gas industry today. It's our best opportunity to bring this country back to its greatness. The industry will create jobs. And in the industry and in the surrounding community businesses that support the gas industry with services and materials. It's no secret that small businesses will generate jobs. However, the small businesses need a larger industry to support. The natural shale gas industry will provide those opportunities for many Americans who want to experience their own American dream as entrepreneurs and business owners. I grew up on a family farm in southwestern Pennsylvania. I was taught to respect and love the lands and way of life. Are those issues, are there issues with hydraulic fracking? I don't have the professional qualifications to answer those questions for you. But I can say that in this industry, it is made up of professional engineers that live to solve issues by doing the right thing. They to respect our environment. Take back a few years ago when we were all afraid to enter a hospital in fear of being infected by HIV. In time, we have engineered in safeguards and procedures to make a visit to the hospital a safe experience again. 31 years ago, my wife and I took a risk and started a business in southwestern Pennsylvania, a small industrial supply company here. We moved forward 28 years and we had five employees. We were just starting to get to know the industry. Now, just three short years later, we have 15 employees and have tripled our sales in the, due to the natural shale gas industry. Where else in this country can you report that kind of growth in today's major recession? I am lucky to be living my American dream. I believe in my heart if you support the natural shale gas industry, many Americans will be able to live their own American dream. Natural gas, it's abundant, it's clean, and it's American. So 
know who the people are speaking. There's people down here in the center making comments while people are kicking. Sorry, dude. Please take it. Okay, so the next thing is comments. The next three comments are Christopher, Christopher Frum, Mary Jin, and Bob uh, Shubensky. My name is Christopher Frum. I'm not an expert. I'm a consumer. Pennsylvania has a long history of fracking uh, wells uh, built in Pennsylvania with over 48,000 wells drilled. With about 1,500 to 2,000 uh, using the latest high-tech te technology. Safety of hydraulic fracturing uh, from shale formations in the state of Pennsylvania is being handled just fine by the Department of Environmental Protection. I have faith in Pennsylvania citizens, whether it's the workers or the inspectors, for they are looking out for the best for our water supply, our land, and the people. I would ask the Department of Education to stay out of anything to do with Marcel Shale in the state of Pennsylvania. When something, someone in Washington, D.C. gets involved, costs go up for the drilling companies, less wells will be drilled, and the consumer pays more for the end product. The state DEP currently has uh, the inspectors to oversee the drilling operations uh, that are currently happening. Uh, Thus, if any problems develop, they can be addressed properly through Pennsylvania's fines and regulations. In the end, it is the best interest of the national gas industry to be a good steward of the environment because everyone is a winner. And to the people that do not want to stick their that want to stick their heads in the sand and never develop the 50 year supply of natural gas that we have standing on our feet right now. Please just disconnect your gas meters right now so I can use all the gas that I want. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bob Shabensky. I was born and raised and still live in Bella, Pennsylvania, a small rural community approximately 20 minutes to the northwest of Washington, PA. I graduated from Avella High School in 1977. I'm a 1982 graduate of Washington Jefferson College, and I'm a 1984 graduate of Waynesburg College where I received an MBA. Yes, you could say I'm a local guy. I own 22 acres of surface land in Avella, but I do not own my oil and gas rights. My interests are that of the area's development, nothing more. Currently, no school district in this county has more drilling activity within, within its district borders than Avella. I feel that being a lifelong resident of the area and a 23-year employee of the natural gas industry, it qualifies me to comment on the impact that the drilling industry has had on my region. I can relate to what is going on in the industry and its benefits for all involved. I am confident that drilling and fracking processes are safe for the environment. For that reason, I truly believe that the Marcellus Shell drilling has been the best thing to hit this area in the last 45 years. I can't think of anything close to matching the potential upside that the drilling industry has brought and will continue to bring to this area. The jobs, the positive impact to the local economy, the region, and the overall benefit to the state have been enormous. With all the plant shutdowns coupled with the poor economy over the last four decades, it is refreshing to see the excitement and the opportunities this proud, hardworking region is experiencing. I can appreciate the role that natural gas is not only playing in the local region, but also what ultimately can become a long-term solution to breaking dependence on foreign oil, oil. The inconveniences of drilling that we're all asked to share are minor in comparison to the ultimate sacrifices our service men and women are asked to make in defense of our foreign energy policies. If increasing the development of natural gas can save one of our service men or service women's lives, to me, that inconvenience, no matter the detail, is worth the trade-off. And finally, I was not paid to be here, but evidently the guy with the five bucks behind me was. <laughs> And 
Benjamin Ballard. Pittsburgh office 
which is more than an hour away from most communities impacted. And to do this, they have to take a day off of work and review files that are complicated. The PADP has not been very responsive lately to community questions or complaints. As a community organizer, I contact the offices regularly and often have a hard time getting a response. Until the DEP and industry can work with communities and provide better transparency, their practices of drilling should not continue. And I also want to state that as we stop burning coal, uh, that's great, but we're still going to be extracting it in these coal fields, and the impacts will still be experienced from extraction that people then export overseas. Let me start off by saying that I hold no animosity toward anyone in this room for their programming stance. I understand that getting big bucks from the gas and oil grounds is a very, very appeal. And let's make no mistake, I do understand the need for people to have jobs, but at what price to pay? Have we, for, have we forgotten the old saying, if it looks too good to be true, then it probably is, or beware of Greeks bearing gifts. Will this be Pennsylvania's Trojan horse? The last wire to hold the governor's office allowed this industry to come here. Meeting behind closed doors and giving away any opportunity to get this right. And you ask why? Simply to start a fracture between the people. Another civil war, and it's been very successful. Divide and conquer. A tried and proven method used by governments and armies. While everyday people go at each other day to day, the real culprits walk away with all the big prize. Now we have meetings so that each side can come in and beg and plead their cause. What a joke. We are all monkeys on a string. We are all just puppets to the corporatocracy that runs this country. If this board had any guts, you would just be honest and tell everyone to go home. That this is a done deal and you're wasting your time and money. This shield board should be ashamed of themselves by coming here and presenting yourselves as an impartial group. Six of you have made a lot of money off this oil and gas industry, and the righteous thing to do would be to step down, but I'm sure you won't. You were put in this position to see that the raping of the people is completed. Your unmitigated goal of coming here just amazes me and reinforces that the movement has started. The awakening is happening, and my only hope is that I live long enough to see the day that a jaded panel like yourselves will never have the balls to present itself as impartial. Yes. Six of whom are directly related to or financially benefited from the natural gas industry. John Toix, third guy over, was paid $882,000 by Chenier, a liquefied natural gas company, in three years. I got 47 bucks, John. How the hell am I supposed to compete with that? I can't do it. It makes me feel like I'm trying to persuade the heads of drug cartels of the heads of the drug dealer. The evidence yeah. is pretty damn clear, and I challenge anyone in this room, and especially anyone on this panel, to find a single, honest, objective, non-industry-related scientist who will tell you that there are not great permanent dangers or risks related to the process of chemically laden hydrofracking shale gas, and dinner is on me if you do it. We only have to look out west to see what's happened to the environment. Water spoiled, toxic chemicals in the air, wildlife populations down, acid breaks up, chemicals found in residents' blood that have no safe level and don't belong in the ground, never mind in their blood. And now it's happening here as well. We're not stupid. I didn't get to be a 66-year-old practitioner of emergency medicine by being stupid. I never fell for a Nigerian scam in my life. But I'll tell you something, I recognize scams when they're coming at me, and this is one big scam. Yep. We are an American anti-terrorist band. And the real terrorists in our land are those who rape the land, destroy the air, ruin our heritage, colonize our states for profit, 
treat us like a third world nation whose resources are there for the grabbing and send it overseas to the highest bidder as long as you pay up the politicians and that's exactly what's happening here. You need to go back to D.C. and if you're honest and ethical human beings, you'll resign. You'll admit to a total conflict of interest and it's totally inevitable. We're going to win this battle or we're going to die trying.
many people in this audience witnessed and watched as 33 men were pulled safely from a cover on 2,300 feet below the surface of Chile last fall? Senator Robbins, the company I represent, also the company that drilled that hole in, in, in Chile, also supplies numerous operators and drilling companies in the Marcellus Shale. We were very proud and overwhelmed when those miners were brought to the surface safely. We are also very proud to be a part of the drilling industry, and we support the Marcellus Shale Development 100%. Thank you for your service. My name is Derwin Goldberg, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Center Rock, and I have over 20 years experience in the oil industry, although most of it is in Texas, and I can tell you that uh, from one thing that I know about, it's suppliers to the oil industry provide very, very high quality products to the highest standards. If you think about flying in an airplane safely, you can think about drilling a well as well safely in terms of the equipment that is provided by the industry. It's very solid. Having lived in Texas for, for many years, I, I studied the history of fracking, and for over 30 years there's been uh, over 500,000 wells drilled all safely in terms of water, water protection. Uh, lastly, I'd like to say that I can't think, this is on a personal note, of anything that we could do in America to help prevent terrorism than becoming energy independent. Thank you very much. down to Somerset, back to the border here. Raised in Beaver County, graduated high school here, went on to Penn State. My roommate was Dr. Terry Engelter, who's been involved in doing this. He bragged to me four years ago that he was becoming a great person, and all things were wonderful, and there was going to be much money. And I said, good, there's going to be something good happening. And then I learned some other things. I've learned the fracking is dangerous, that there isn't regulation at the federal level that needs to be there. Deals were made in 2005 in the House and the Senate and the White House. And we're in a serious situation, gentlemen. Our conference this weekend in Western Pennsylvania, United Methodist Church, voted in a section 108 to 4, to calling for an ending of drilling, for a temporary period of time to analyze what's going on. We call for more regulation at the federal and state levels. We call for a severance tax. And we want much more protection for highways. I talked to many people the last number of years. I have seen capped wells all over northwestern and central Pennsylvania. There is plenty of gas in the ground that's already ready to be used and is being used. This gas is going overseas from Baltimore and New Jersey and Houston. They're building a new one. I got that. I can make 200% profit. That would help my, that would help my uh, pension at this point. But brothers, I am not investing in it. I will not invest in it. It's a crazy thing that's going on. And God is not happy. And also the Central Pennsylvania Conference has done the same. And the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference. All the bishops are solidly behind it, and we're working with the whole religious community to stop this drilling. Yeah. I'm a I'm a uh, there are obviously a lot of intel very intelligent people here, and I don't believe that the majority of drillers really have any bad intentions for a land or people. But as a private pilot, I see a lot of questionable things with this development. I see waste impoundments that are situated within hundreds of feet from watersheds and reservoirs. Impoundments filled to the brim. 
Barn hoses questionably running over hills. Air whiskers in these impoundments that try to evaporate the waste on very humid days. Uh, frack trucks that spill this water over dirt roads to keep dust down. Liners that are caving in. Liners that are being buried on site. Pipelines that seem to be very haphazardly run to each drill site. Drill paths and compression stations in people's backyards. Broken or non-existent erosion fencing on hillsides. Frack trucks lined to get into municipal waste treatment plants. And I see a lot of development happening very quickly. If this development is truly for American independence and foreign oil, then it should be federally overseeing industry. Our current state government is simply not prepared for this scale of development. Right. The, land of leasing, the, the land leasing frenzy that has swept our state has every municipality in a state of confusion. They have no idea how to go about protecting its citizens. And more importantly, water authorities providing our drinking water are not equipped to handle the volume of contaminated water this industry creates. Even a handful of these water authorities are changing they're cleansing chemicals from chlorine to chloramine to escape regulations on byproducts created from this frac fluid. When you do a force these companies to dispose all chemicals using these frac fluids, it is, it, is, it is very easy to say that there's never been a documented case of contamination and the public doesn't even know what to test for. Right. We need you to oversee and find out how much radioactive material are coming up from these wells. Air emission standards need to be set and collectively be mandated, not just on an individual site, but all collectively. Um, each complaint or contaminated area should be thoroughly investigated and documented and in Washington County there's plenty to start. Uh, I want my gentleman to protect me, use the resources to oversee this, and stop this chaotic development until the plans are in place.
not acid migrate if we were to be treating the uh, uh, waste products coming from the steel industry, from the manufacturing industry. Obviously, that's gone now, okay? But now we have fracking water, this, that, the other one. I'm completely behind the drilling of the gas, the Marshall's gas drilling. To prove that, I have 600, 700, 800 acres leased on for drilling. It's mines and meadows. It's an APD riding resort. And it's one of uh, Lawrence County's and Beaver County's uh, prime locations for um, uh, tourism. And I'm, what I want to show is tourism and gas really can coexist. And excuse me for not being a very good public speaker. Thank you very much. Followed by Erica Sapp and Delma J. Burns. 